guys, I'm back and I'm here to do a book haul. The third book haul of the year. <clears throat> I didn't think I would have this many book hauls. I thought I would only have like maybe one or two, but I'm, you know, surpassing myself again. So I'm going to talk about some of the books that have just come in and I'm going to talk about the ones that I'm going to be attempting to read before the 26th of September because the 26th to the 30th is the weekend of Festival America. So Festival America is a French organization uh, here in Vincennes. And Vincennes is in the southeast of Paris. Uh, so when you're in Paris and you want to go to Vincennes, you have to get a special ticket to go to Vincennes because it is not considered as a part of uh, the Paris region. So it is a cushy little ritzy town. And there they have a festival that is dedicated towards Anglo lit literature, specifically from the US, Canada, the Caribbean, South America, and this year they have added Europe. So what they do is this festival happens every other year. So <clears throat> the year of 2020, the festival was canceled and they hesitated about coming back in 2022, but, in, but they actually did. They came back in 2022. That was a great festival. There were a lot of black American writers there. And and so now it's two years later and it's 2024. So I will probably try to do some little clips and videos while I'm at the festival so you can kind of see how it is. The first event that I will be attending is going to be probably Thursday afternoon. There's an event, there's a talk, and then Thursday night, there is the Harlem Night which is dedicated to Colson Whitehead and his Harlem Shuffle series. So I'm really excited for that because I was I didn't think I'd be able to go. And at the last minute, it's turned out that I will be able to go to that. So thrill, thrill, thrill. <clears throat> so let me get started with the books that have come in that I will be specifically reading for this festival. All right, so the first one is this one right here, which is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. Sadly, I did not get a ticket to have like an aperitif with Donnie Walton. Mistake on my part. And now there are no more tickets for that. But anyway, I'll go to some of her other talks and stuff and I'll eventually catch up with her for an autograph. All right, <clears throat> so this one says, Opal is a fiercely independent young woman pushing against the grain in her style and attitude, a black punk artist before her time. Despite her unconventional looks, Opal believes she can be a star. So when the aspiring British singer-songwriter Nev Charles discovers her one night at a Detroit bar, she takes him up on his offer to make rock music together. In early 70s, New York City, just as Opal's finding her niche as part of a flamboyant and funky creative scene, a rival band signed to her label brandishes a Confederate flag at a promotional concert. Opal's bold protest and the violence that ensues set off a chain of events that will not only change the lives of those she loves, but also be a deadly reminder that repercussions are always harsher for women, especially black women who dare to speak their truth. So <clears throat> that is the revival of Opal and Nev and can't wait to read it. Okay, now these next two, we've spoken about these already. So we have uh, Razor Blade Tears and All Sinners Bleed. These are the next two books that are in the collection of S.A. Cosby. And S.A. Cosby is going to be at the Festival of America. And I'm going to be having breakfast with him. I'm so excited. 
So this is going to be fantastic. Um, I can't wait. So both of these are, are supposed to be exciting thrillers. So <clears throat> this one is Razor Blade Tears. It says, Ike Randolph left jail 15 years ago, but a black man with cops at the door knows to be afraid. He is devastated to learn his son, Isaiah, who Ike never fully accepted, has been murdered along with Isaiah's white husband, Derek. Derek's father, Buddy Lee, who has his own criminal past, may have been ashamed of Derek, but he won't rest until he knows why his only child was killed. All right, so this one sounds like it could be really like a wild ride. Now, this one is All the Sinners Bleed, which people seem to describe this as a bit more uh, intense and much more complex. It says, Titus Crown is the first black sheriff in the history of Sharon or Sharon County, Virginia. After years of working as an FBI agent, Titus knows his hometown might seem like a land of moonshine, cornbread, and honeysuckle, but dark secrets fester under the surface. When a beloved school teacher is murdered by a former pupil, who is then fatally shot by Titus's deputies, the community is horrified. Titus's investigation unearths terrible crimes and the specter of a serial killer haunting the dirt lanes of Sharon County. With the, with the killer's possible connection to a local church and the town's harrowing past weighing on him, Titus must unravel the truth while concealing his own painful secrets. So, yeah, that's these two. Okay, the next one is this one right here, which is The Unsettled by Ayanna Mathis. So, Ayanna Mathis will also be at the Festival of America. Her first novel was The Twelve Tribes of Hattie, which got her on the map. I sadly have not read that one, but I will be reading this one. All right, so it says, From the moment Ava Carson and her 10-year-old son, Tucson, arrive at Glen Avenue Family Shelter in Philadelphia in 1985, Ava is already plotting a way out. Estranged from her own mother, Duchess, and their home in Bonaparte, Alabama, Ava is determined to give her son the chance of a better life. So, yeah, we're going to see. Um, I really don't know. Uh, this is Ayana Mathis right here. So I'm excited to get this. It's, it's funny because this one has some of the biggest font I've seen in a long time in, in a book. So... Yeah, it's going to be interesting. All right, the next one, this author will be at the Festival of America as well. And I found him on the list and I was like, who is this young black author? I've never heard of him before. Tyrick White. Now, I don't know Tyrick White, but here he is right here. And I think this is this is his debut. So he has been likened to Jasmine Ward and oh, somebody else, they said. Jasmine Ward and maybe Toni Morrison. I'm not sure. No, it wasn't Toni Morrison. It was somebody else. Uh, I'm going I'm, I'm to look it up. I'll put the name of the other person. But they say he is, is writing a similar to... Jasmine Ward, and somebody else. Anyway, let me read what it's about. In 1980s Brooklyn, Key is enchanted with her world, glowing with her dreams. A charming and tender doula serving the Black women of her East New York neighborhood. She lives like her mother among the departed and learns to speak to and for them. Her untimely death leaves behind her mother, Audrey, who is on the verge of losing the public housing apartment they once shared. Kali, Key's grieving son, soon learns that he too has inherited this sacred gift and begins to slip into the liminal space 
between the living and the dead on his journey to self-realization. Yeah. So you're going to have some ghosts in this one. And, you know, I don't, I'm not really a fan of reading about ghosts, but I'm going to make it work. I'm going to see what this is all about. I'm going to give it a chance. It, the cover is, I like it. It's kind of collage situation. But what I don't like is this small print. This print is way too small. I don't know why it's this small, but it is. It's like they didn't want it to be 400 pages or 300 and something pages. So they made it 200 and something pages with this little tiny print. That's crazy to me. Anyway, um, I'm going to check it out and I'm going to let you know. And I'm Because this is one of the ones I'm going to read before the 26th of September. All right. <clears throat> so... Those are all the ones that I am reading for the Festival America. That's a lot. But I'm already, I've got a good handle. I've already read, um, I'm already halfway into Blacktop Wasteland already. And I already read Lazaretto at the beginning of the month. We're, all, we're still at the beginning of the month because we are the what? We're the fifth today. Uh, or we the fourth today. We're the fourth today. So I feel like I'm doing pretty good. The next book I'm going to talk about is this one right here. 54 Miles. Now this is the sequel to one of my favorite books from one of my favorite black male authors. And that is The Last Thing You Surrender by Leonard Pitts Jr. So this is Leonard Pitts Jr.'s latest book. Um, I highly recommend, but you need to read The Last Thing You Surrender first because this is a sequel. Uh, the publishers were so kind to send me a copy. And this copy came, I was so happy because I would have had to wait until like October or something like that to be able to get a copy of this here in Europe. So weird to me. Okay, I'm not going to read... I'm not going to read what this is about because I'm looking at it. And I'm thinking this has got this too much spoiler territory, particularly for people who have not read The Last Thing You Surrender. Get your life, read The Last Thing You Surrender, and then pick this up. Okay, the next book I'm going to talk about is this one right here, which is The Secret Keeper of Bain Street by Trisha R. Thomas. So this one came in and I've already read this one. So you can say, ah, good. She read one. So you can look at my video that I did, which is my August wrap up. And in the August wrap up, I talk a lot about this book because it is one of the two books that I've read. So this one is basically historical fiction. Next book is this one right here, which I'm so ecstatic about. And that's Bernice L. McFadden's Sugar. Wow, wow, wow. Sugar is now a vintage classic. This is a vintage classic addiction. Look at this beautiful red. Oh, I love this. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, I've read Sugar now. It's, I think I've read it three times. I will surely read it at least one or two more times. Love it so much. Uh, so if you have not read Sugar and you do not know who Bernie Sal McFadden is, I highly recommend you go and you look at her backlist of books because she is oh, some of the best writing you're going to get from the black community and sugar was her debut novel so this one it says sugar is young confident and hoping to start over but when she arrives in the southern town of bigelow it is not long before the neighborhood is alight with gossip and suspicion Sugar fears her past is catching up with her. Then she meets Pearl, a woman trying to forget her own trauma. As these next door neighbors become unlikely friends, they wonder if their lives could finally be changing for the better. But small towns have long memories. So, yeah, I highly recommend this. And I say, get this edition. Absolutely gorgeous. So the next one I got is this one right here. The Truths We Hold, An American Journey by Kamala Harris. 
So I decided to get this one because of the elections and to learn more about her. And yeah, I'm excited to read this one. It has, yeah, a lot of pictures in there and stuff. And the writing isn't, you know, is 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 a decent writing style. So I'm anxious to learn more about our possibly new president. Okay, <clears throat> this next book, I was enticed to get this one because a girl that I follow over on Bookstagram, she started talking about this one and I was like, this book sounds so good. So it's called Butter, a novel of food and murder. And it's by Asako Yuzuki. Asako Yuzuki. Translated by Polly Barton. This book, I have a feeling is going to be so damn good. It's like a murder mystery with gastronomic undertones. So it says, the cult Japanese bestseller about a female gourmet cook and serial killer and the journalist's intent on cracking her case inspired by a true story. Okay. So it says, there are two things that I simply cannot tolerate. Feminist and margarine. Okay, so I guess that's a serial killer. So it says, gourmet cook Manoko Kaji sits in the Tokyo detention house, convicted of the serial murders of lonely businessmen whom she is said to have seduced with her delicious home cooking. The case has captured the nation's imagination, but Kaji refuses to speak with the press entertaining no visitors. That is until journalist Rika Machida writes a letter asking for her recipe for beef stew and Kaji can't resist writing back. Rika, the only woman in her news office, works late each night, rarely cooking more than ramen. As the visits unfold between her and the steely Kaji, they are closer to a master class in food than journalistic research. Rika hopes this gastronomic exchange will help her soften Kaji, but it seems that Rika might be the one changing. With each meal she eats, something is awakening in her body. Do she and Kaji have more in common than she once thought? So I can't wait to get to this one. It just sounds so freaking good. I'm not sure when I'll be able to get to it, though. Probably in November. Would probably be. Or December. This might be a good December read. So, yeah. Great, 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 great. And last but not least, I have Th There Are Rivers in the Sky by Elif Shafak. I love me some Elif Shafak. She is just so fantastic of a writer. She writes about so many important things, important themes, important themes that have a lot to do with women and their survival and their, you know, their advancement. It's just their education, their, you know, it's just really, really good what she writes. And so I have a feeling this one is more than just a pretty cover. This is going to be the thing. I haven't heard very many people talk about Alicia Fox's book this book, but I I have a feeling this is going to be a good one. Now it is, I think it's quite the chunker though, because I think it's coming in at almost 500 pages. It's 500, 480 pages. <clears throat> so it's not short. And also keep in mind, butter is coming in at 452 pages. So those are both real chunkers. So this one, it says, <clears throat> this is the story of one lost poem, two great rivers and three remarkable lives, all connected by a single drop of water. In the ruins of Nineveh, 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 sorry, an ancient city of Mesopotamia, there lies hidden in the sand, 
fragments of a long forgotten poem, the Epic of Gal Gilgamesh. In Victorian London, an extraordinary child is born at the edge of the dirt Black River Thames. Author's only chance of escaping poverty is his brilliant memory. <clears throat> when his gift earns him a spot as an apprentice at a printing press, author, author's world opens up far beyond the slums with one book sending him across the seas, Nineveh and its remains. In Turkey in 2014, Nareen, a Yazidi girl living by the river T Tigris, waits to be baptized with water brought from the holy Lalish in Iraq. The ceremony is cruelly interrupted and soon Nareen and her grandmother must journey across war-torn lands in the hope of reaching the sacred valley of their people. In London in 2018, broken-hearted Zalika, a, a hydrologist, moves to a houseboat on the Thames to escape the wreckage of her marriage. Zalika foresees a life drained of all love and meaning until an unexpected connection to her homeland changes everything. So I always love stories that have it, you know, three main characters living kind of slightly different things, but at, there's one thing in particular that joins those characters together and then really, you know, juts off a really interesting story. That's what this sounds like to me and I'm all for it. So I can't wait to get to it. So those are the books, as you can see. This month, I'm super busy reading because the, you know, Festival of America has got me, you know, on it, but I think I'm going to make it. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not wasting my time. I'm doing a lot of reading, uh, big chunks uh, of pages, like 100, 150 pages at a time. And this allows me to finish books a lot quicker. But anyway, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, comment below and tell me what you're excited for in this list. Tell me what you would read or if you read any of these, if you liked them or if you didn't like them. Let's have a chat. You know I love that. And stay tuned. I'll be back really soon with another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>